Hi everyone, welcome back to Power365 Solutions Power Shorts. Today we're going to be looking at triggering a power automate flow using some custom buttons in the model driven interface. Although this method that I'm going to talk through today may seem simple, it's definitely not obvious. We're going to look to achieve this without using any HTTP triggers or custom code. And I'm also going to demonstrate two different methods of execution, one using the Ribbon Workbench Classic Designer and one using the new PowerFX command controls. Without further ado, let's dig into the demo. So for the purpose of demonstration, I've set up a quick organizational own table that allows me to record multiple numbers against an individual contact. And the flow process we're going to be looking into today just subsequently updates that number with a dialing code. As previously mentioned, I've used two different methodologies for this. I've used the new designer for the PowerFX command bars. And I've also utilized the Ribbon Workbench's smart buttons functionality. So how do these then act as my trigger for a power automate flow? What I've done is configured two simple date time fields on my entity called classic flow trigger and power FX flow trigger. These buttons then subsequently just update this field with a date time record, and then they act as my trigger point on my power automate flow. As you can see, if I go into the configuration of my power automate flow, my triggers are currently set up as the two columns, power FX flow trigger and the classic flow trigger. These are seen on the entity here, and they are simple date time fields. So let's look into the classic or ribbon workbench functionality first. Let's just trial it straight away on the button. As you can see, it prompts me to say confirm formatting trigger. This is completely customizable as we'll dig into shortly. If I select OK, you can see that the classic flow trigger populates with the modified on of this individual record. Now, if I go back into my ribbon workbench, I can see the configuration here. With smart buttons, which is an additional solution, I have the ability to run report, run a workflow, webhook, quick JavaScript to open a dialog. In this instance, I've just chose to run a simple workflow. Uh, I've titled it called Classic Update Formatting. I've given it the workflow name, and I've also provided some start workflow confirmation text. Here you have the ability to add additional rules or custom JavaScript in the, um, in the perspective of a success callback or an error callback, and then also any custom that you'd like to overlay on top. So how does this look from a process method? So if we go into the individual process, we can see that I've set up an on-demand real-time workflow. The only functionality that this workflow is set up to do is update that field with the modified on. That simply is my configuration for the classic flow trigger. As we can see, if I go back into this record, we can verify that that's worked. Also, we'll step back out into our Power Automate process and see that we've had a run. Yes, we've had a run one minute ago. We should be able to refresh the record and see that there's a dialing code now in place. One massive advantage for utilizing this method is that if we save and close, we can see that I've also got the primary contact number defined as well. So here we have the ability to open XRM Toolbox and use a tool called Bulk Workflow Execution. I can then select that individual on demand process and I can either filter out my records using a custom fetch XML query, which I have in this instance, I've selected the primary contact equals yes, or I can choose to use a CRM view. I can then validate my query and I can start the workflow against those individual records. Once I press okay and go back into my workflow, um, into my screen process, I can refresh the page and I can see now that these flows have subsequently triggered correctly the three records I'm expecting, and they've now also got a dialing code. So what we'll do now is dive into the PowerFX version of that. Um, with the PowerFX functionality, all I've done is included a field on the form. That is essential because it's running the context of the form. One thing I didn't just mention about the classic flow trigger is that it doesn't actually need to be on the form. It only is here for demonstration purposes because it runs in the context of the entity. For this PowerFX button, um, if we're going to be updating a field on the form, then it does need to be on the form. So let's take a look at how that is configured. Um, on select, I've got my new button created in my new designer. And I'm just patching um, the self.selected item, which is the context of the record. I'm updating that PowerFX flow trigger to be now. And I'm also running a notify after it as well to feed some information back to the user. We will be expanding on feeding information back to the user within Power Automate Flows in, in the near future, so please do stay tuned for that. So let's look at running that PowerFX format numbers button from the context of the form. So it does what it says in the tin. You can see that it has notified me to say the number reformat has been triggered. Please refresh the record to see the results. 
and we can confirm that our PowerFX flow trigger subsequently has a date in it, which essentially has become UTC now. If we refresh the record, we can see that the number format has also been successful. There we have it. That's two very simple ways of triggering a power automate flow. It's maintainable when we go through in the process of ALM because we haven't got to update anything in upstream environments, which you do have to for HTTP. It's also maintainable fully with code because there's no custom code included here, no JavaScript essentially being run apart from within the context of the ribbon workbench solution. And um, now we have the ability to create these as many of as we want, as many trigger points as we need it to create. We can also include filtering conditions either on our PowerFX formula or within the context of our process that we've created. If there's any questions, please feel free to leave them below. If not, we're going to be expanding on this in upcoming videos, so please stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one.